Good afternoon. Good morning. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to our SPNI Nature Israel webinar. One of a series we do every couple of weeks, sometimes more or less frequently, depending on holidays and schedules. But we're here. We've been here for three years. Next month. Next month being uh, next webinar. Really. Uh, we have a great webinar tonight. Uh, das Gan Perkal, our Marine Protection uh, Coordinator here at SPNI, uh, is going to be updating us on what's going on with the Mediterranean Sea and what we're doing about the threats and challenges to it and in it. Uh, so much going on. Uh, we've got quite a sea coast and between our territorial and economic waters. We like to call it the blue half of Israel. It's about the same size as Israel in the Mediterranean. And we'll get to that in a couple of minutes. We're letting people join here. I'm Jay Shofit, uh, Director of Development Partnerships, coming to you from Tel Aviv. Hadas is, I presume, at her home, and I'm not sure where that is, but I'm guessing Tel Aviv. Herzalia, thank you. Hello, uh, Lisa from Soho, and everybody, please let us know where you're writing from. I had a little uh, takala here, as we say. Uh, something went wrong with my uh, video on my computer. I've been lugging it around for a week. I just came back from a great week with the SPNI Nature Discovery Mission. We had uh, 15, uh, 16 uh, participants, including a couple of our board members, but people from all over the United States. Uh, really had a fun, fun mission, uh, a week of seeing our top sites, nature sites in cities, the uh, Jerusalem Bird Observatory and the Gazelle Valley in Jerusalem. And we went out with Amir Balaban into the Jerusalem Hills and he pulled out pine tree saplings so they wouldn't take root and uh, told us all about deforestation and how forests regenerate. We saw the two startup nature sites. We're rewilding wetlands. Incredible, uh, incredible uh, itinerary guides. Really, you should come on it. Uh, our wetland rewilding in Farupin and Magan Michael. We saw birds in Jerusalem. We saw Arabian babblers, incredible species of birds that SPNI founder uh, Mot Zahavi did groundbreaking research on. They're incredibly social birds, uh, very altruistic. Wrote a book called The Handicap Principle about their social behavior, and we all witnessed it. And in a lot, uh, we saw Timna at night, and that's an incredible sight, really, not much to do with SPNI, but except for the fact that there's trails that run through there that we blaze and maintain. Um, but we were out on a uh, we were out on a glass bottom boat, saw the coral reefs, talked to our SPNI coordinators uh, down in the Gulf of a lot. And uh, we saw the incredible bird observatory down there. Birds are just incredible everywhere. They're on these salt marshes and freshwater pools uh, in uh, right at the right next to the city of a lot. Uh, really interesting stuff. Hi, Maggie and uh, Leon, uh, board members in New Jersey. Hi, everybody from everywhere. I'm having a hard time on my phone reading all the, everything and talking at the same time. Denver, Colorado. I'm so happy to see everybody. We had a great group from all over the states, from New Jersey and Vermont and uh, Pasadena and Berkeley and Austin and uh, Florida, Sarasota. Uh, really a uh, fun trip. Westport, Connecticut or Norwalk, I believe. Um, uh, great group. Our next trip is November 5th to the 10th. Uh, in uh, We'll be going the northern route and then again in March uh in um 2024 on a southern route it's a week it's intense it's amazing behind the scenes nature like you've never seen we're going to have other trips upcoming in the next year or so including where we're going to focus on water resources uh including the mediterranean and we'll get to that right now uh that is our topic of the evening and i will just mention that next week we have a webinar next week instead of two weeks from now because of passover um so we will be hearing from Guidon Brumberg, who will also be talking about water, uh, <clears throat> different water. Uh, he's going to be talking about the Green Blue Deal and uh, how we're uh, going to be selling water to Jordan, fresh water that we desalinate and now have a surplus of. Uh, and they're going to be uh, creating solar fields in their deserts and sending us electricity and a lot of regional cooperation issues and about the environmental stressors that are truly cross border, as is the Mediterranean, our topic today. Uh, we do some work uh, cross border with uh, our partners around Mediterranean, uh, around the Mediterranean basin. But uh, Hadas will uh, let us know everything that's going on and uh, what we need and uh, what we're raising money for today. And uh, thank you, Hadas Ganperkal, the Marine Protection Coordinator uh, here at SBNI. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. 
and uh, hi to everybody that's connected. I saw we have some people here from Baltimore and Pikesville, so that's where my family is originally from. So excited uh, to have everyone join us here. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, make sure we share the correct screen. Just a second. Here we go. All right, so do we see this in, oh, I can tell we are not seeing this in presentation mode. It's always correct. a little game to be done here. Are you seeing it now in presentation mode? No. We practiced this before. Aha, here it is. Okay. Great. Um, so like Jay said, my name is Hadas. I am the Marine Projects Coordinator for the Blue Half, which is the Marine Division in the SPNI. Um, I've been working for the SPNI for about three years now, and uh, maybe some of you have attended um, my previous talks on this uh, great webinar. Um, um, and so today we'll be sort of talking about what's changed in the last year since we last spoke, um, how we're protecting our seas from the coastline and all the way down to the sea floor um, at about a thousand meters depth and deeper. So, so pretty deep. Um, we're gonna share sound as well, great. All right. So might be uh, surprising to some of you, the Israeli Mediterranean is more than half of Israel's area. So Israel is a pretty small country, but um, it's actually double the size of what, of what uh, you might think. Um, that's a lot of marine area. Um, in the last decade to 15 years, not a lot of protection was going on, even though we have so much uh, marine area. Um, sort of what was, what, what, was thought around the world and also in Israel is what's not probably not so much going on um, under the water. It's just sort of a big, vast blue area, uh, not a lot of nature to protect, but actually um, there's a lot of nature in the Mediterranean. Um, uh, if you've ever been snorkeling or diving in Elat, you might think, ah, compared to Elat, to, to the Red Sea, there's probably not, definitely not a lot to see in the Mediterranean, but I think bluefin tuna and huge rays and and uh, um, lots of species of groupers and so many different kinds of fish and animals in 60 different habitats is actually great, um, unique nature. Um, and so the potential is is amazing. Uh, and we're here to make sure that 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 that's protected. Um, so lots of nature, but also lots of threats. Most of the pictures, almost all of the pictures you're gonna see in my talk today and a lot of uh, videos that we're gonna watch um, were all filmed here in Israel. So this is at about hundred meters depth. We have uh, sponges, colorful sponges and sea stars. Um, and, and sadly, there's a lot of, of, of threats uh, that we need to protect these animals from. The first thing we're, we're going to talk about is overfishing. This is a problem worldwide, but actually, uh, sadly, the Mediterranean is actually the most overfished sea in the world. Um, so basically, we are fishing faster than what nature, what, than what these fish can reproduce um, and replenish. Um, unselective fishing. So whenever we're fishing is going after some targeted species. There are always other species that are being caught as well, whether it's sea turtles getting caught in re recreational fishing hooks, uh, whether it's seabirds um, that are caught in, in abandoned fishing gear. And also this grouper called the dusky grouper. He is an endangered species and here he's caught in an abandoned um, net. So we're gonna also talk about abandoned fishing gear um, throughout the talk today. Um, Another threat we're dealing with is habitat destruction. Um, a third of animals here have been affected by this, whether it's infrastructure like this gas rig or destructive fishing methods um, like the trawler here. So trawling is a type of fishing where a very big net is dragged along the bottom of the sea floor. And this hurts the biodiversity as well as affecting biodiversity, but is actually physically harming um, the habitat of the seafloor, which is such an important habitat um, to ocean health. Pollution is a big issue. 
we used to think usually when we would say pollution, first, first thing your mind goes to is sewage. That's actually gotten better over the years in Israel, although there's still work to be done in terms of nutrients coming from our rivers. But we're also dealing with other types of, of pollution, um, noise pollution, um, lots of shipping going on in the Mediterranean, light. This is actually something we're dealing with mostly um, in the Red Sea where um, the population is so close to the sea and, and lots of tourism and lots of boardwalks and lights everywhere that can really affect nature, um, can affect corals. Um, we have brine water, okay? Most of, most of our water that we drink here in Israel is desalinated. So where is all that brine going and how is that affecting the sea? We have a picture here of the tar. One of the talks I gave in uh, 2021 was when all of this tar landed on, on Israel's beaches and we're still feeling the effects of that um, today. Another global issue is climate change uh, affecting not only the oceans, but in the seas we're seeing, especially in the, in the Eastern Mediterranean, we're seeing, we're seeing the rise in temperature that's already affecting biodiversity and also facilitating the continued um, invasion of alien species mostly from the Red Sea through the Suez Canal that connects the Red Sea to the Mediterranean. So we have hundreds of, of invasive species um, that are used to warm water. So as the water gets warmer here, we're actually creating um, a better a, a habitat um, that's, that's uh, conducive to the, to the invasive species and creating competition um, with these local, with local species. Um, so lots of things affecting our oceans today or our seas. Um, and at the, in the blue half in the SPNI, we're working um, on all different levels uh, to do something about it. So we'll start with marine reserves. So this is the map of marine reserves in Israel, in, uh, not marine reserves, nature reserves in Israel in 2012. So you, all of that green is, is terrestrial reserves, um, which uh, was in pretty good shape. Uh, but you can see that there is basically nothing in the water, which less than half a percent, um, which I'll, uh, if, if I'll round down and say that we're talking about basically zero marine reserves in Israel. That's when we started promoting um, a, a plan for uh, seven marine reserves along the coastline of Israel. The objective was to reach 18% by 2020. Um, we're, not, we're not there yet. Um, and we're also talking about, uh, well, well, after the video that we're going to watch, we're going to talk about the new objective for marine reserves um, in the world or globally, which is 30% by 2030. So we're at 2023, and we want to get to 30% marine reserves uh, um, by the end um, of this decade. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So let's learn um, a bit more about marine reserves in Israel. <laughs> אנחנו הישראלים מתים על הים, ומה אנחנו עושים בים? חוץ מאת זה, אנחנו שומרים. חבר'ה, יש מצב שאתם שומרים לי רגע? שומרים. שלא נשרף, שלא נתלכלך, שלא נלך לאיבוד. אמא של גלי, הבת שלך מחכה לך בסוכת המציל. רק על הים אנחנו לא ממש שומרים. יותר נכון על מה שבתוכו. הים המופלא שלנו הולך ואוזן. מתחת למים שלנו יש טבע מטורף. ספארי ענק של בעלי חיים, צמחים, שוניות. היה... הוא לא אותו הים בכל מקום. העולם המופלא שתמצאו מטר מחוף השרון שונה לגמרי מהים של ניצנים או מהים של עתלית. וזה רק בעומק 15 מטרים מתחת לפני הים. תראו מה קורה בעומק 100 מטרים. כשצוללים פנימה, מגלים עמקים, רכסים, קניונים, דיונות. בים שלנו יש יותר מ-50 בתי גידול שונים עם מינים ייחודיים שחיים רק כאן. שלא תבינו, ברור לי שהעולם מתקדם. יש בים המון פוטנציאל כלכלי ולכולם דחוף לממש אותו. גם אני בעד. אבל חייבים לעשות את זה בתבונה, אחרת לא יישאר לנו ים. הים הזה... שבלעדיו ישראל היא חצי מדינה, מאפשר לנו כל כך הרבה טבע מדהים, תיירות אקולוגית עם פוטנציאל צמיחה, מה שנקרא כלכלה כחולה, תרופות חדשניות, אוויר לנשימה. 50% מהאוויר שאנחנו נושמים בא מהים, כאילו רוב מי השתייה שלנו מוטפלים מהים. Mm. <אח> הים הוא חלק מהזהות שלנו, נשמור עליו 
זה לשמור על עצמנו. חייבים להקים לאורך חופי ישראל רשת של שבע שמורות ימיות גדולות, מהצפון ועד הדרום. ליצור מרחבים שבהם החיות מתרבות וגדלות ללא דיג, ללא קידוחים, עם רשות אחת שעושה סדר ומפקחת על הים. הגיע הזמן להקים שמורות טבע ימיות. of that, but I, I hope you were still able to read the subtitles. Uh, so we've been working on this for a decade. This is the plan that was um, made about a, a, a decade ago and, and uh, slowly but surely, we are now at 4% of uh, marine reserves in our territorial waters. Um, you can see that over the, the past few years, we've had um, declaration of a few major reserves, the reserve uh, in the north of Israel, Rosh Anikra, which was declared in 2019, um, um, and, and another, another big reserve that was declared in our deep sea called the Palmachim slide. So, and we're going to talk about that a little bit in, in a few more slides. Um, while working on marine reserves, we've, we've also been working on a legislation reform um, for fishing in Israel. Fishing laws in Israel were uh, very obsolete. They basically weren't updated. Um, uh, in 2015, they hadn't been updated uh, since the mandate, since the British mandate here in Israel. So in 2015, a new uh, row of, of new laws uh, were passed that uh, basically bring, bring us closer to a sustainable fisheries management here in Israel. So it decides uh, where, when, how, and how much we can fish. Uh, we're one of the main laws that passed that really made uh, a, a huge difference on fishing here in Israel was closing the northern part of Israel or 40% of Israel's waters or territorial waters to uh, trawling. Right, so northern Israel is now uh, totally closed to trawling, and also lots of areas um, in the center and southern parts of, of Israel. Um, and basically, the fishermen were compensated. In the clip here, we can see one of these ships uh, being sunk, and it is today uh, an artificial reef or, or, or a dive site. Um, so basically, making the most of, of the situation. And we are working on doing that and, and, and basically ceasing bottom trawling in Israel fully, um, also on our southern coastline. Um, here in this clip, you can see basically what, what this net looks like as, as it is dragging on the bottom of the floor, catching anything in its, uh, capturing anything in its way. Um, and, and here in Israel, that, and also globally, that includes many sea turtles, hundreds of sea turtles that get caught in that a year. Um, dolphins, in the last two months, we've had a few dolphins that have watched, washed up to shore um, with signs of being caught in, in trawler nets. Um, and so that's why this is one of the main things that we continue to promote today is uh, ceasing bottom trawling in Israel altogether uh, while compensating the fishermen. So um, Let's dive deeper into the deep sea. Um, th these pictures were taken were taken almost at around 1,000 meters depth, so very deep, uh, where light um, doesn't doesn't reach. And so we're talking about a totally different habitat that's dependent on uh, a different system uh, than the solar system. Uh, sorry, cold water corals, uh, sh different kinds of sharks. Um, lots of, of incredible of incredible nature that until not long ago, no one knew that we had um, in Israel. So this is in the EEZ, in the exclusive economic zone of Israel, and robots are being used to uh, search what's going on on there. So let's watch another video um, with more footage. If you ask me, the people in the sea are going to two groups. I don't want to say to those who start the cassette from the vanilla. אני מדבר על אנשי הצל מול אנשי השמש. חצי מהאנשים אוהבים את הים שלהם ככה, וחצי ככה. חלוקה דומה של יצורי אור וחושך מתרחשת גם בתוך הים. עד לעומק של 200 מטרים, קרני השמש חודרות ומשמשות כמקור אנרגיה נהדר לחי ולצומח. לא כולם אוהבים להשתזף. מתחת ל-200 מטרים, היכן שקרני השמש כבר לא מגיעות, מתחיל מה שנקרא הים העמוק. ולמרות שמדובר במקום חשוך, עם טמפרטורות נמוכות ולחץ אטמוספרי אדיר, יש בו חיים עשירים ומשגשגים. אפשר למצוא כאן נוצות ים וסרטנים, אלמוגים נדירים בסכנת הכחדה, דיונונים וקרישים. 
וככל שמעמיקים, פוגשים ביצורים שלא ראו מעולם אור יום ולא תלויים בשמש. אלמוגי הים העמוק, למשל, ניזונים משאריות, חלקיקי מזון והפרשות של בעלי חיים שנושרים מהמים העליונים אל עומק הים. תופעה זו מכונה גם שלג ימי, כי היא נראית כפתיתים לבנים הנושרים מטה. הם מפרקים את הנשורת והופכים בעצמם לבסיס מאגרי המזון של הים העמוק. ויש גם יצורים שיודעים לייצר אנרגיה לגמרי בעצמם. למשל, חיידקים ייחודיים, שיודעים לנצל לטובתם את תרכובות המתאן שמבעבעות ונפלטות מקרקעית כדור הארץ. אלה מהווים ענף נפרד לחלוטין מעולם החי המוכר לנו, ועל בסיסם מתקיים מארג מזון שלם. עכשיו אתם בטח שואלים את עצמכם, מי מפריע לים העמור? מי בכלל מגיע לשם חוץ מהרובוט עם המצלמה שצילם את מה שראיתם? ומסתבר שמגיעים. המערכת האקולוגית בעומקים האלה חשופה בשנים האחרונות להרבה מאוד איומים. כמו למשל, פעולות חיפוש והפקת גז ונפט, הכרוכות בהנחת תשתיות, בתאורה וברעש, דייג אגרסיבי במכמורות המבצעות חריש עמוק וזורעות הרס אדיר לקרקעית ולבתי הגידול הרגישים, ואפילו השלכת פסולת, כמו אפר פחם מול חופי ישראל. אז מה הפתרון לשמירת הים העמוק של ישראל? אחד, להכריז על שמורות טבע בים העמוק. שתיים, להסדיר את אישורי קידוחי הגז והנפט בוועדה תכנונית כפי שתעוגן במסגרת חוק האזורים הימיים עם פיקוח של המשרד להגנת הסביבה. שלוש, לאסור דייג מכמורת בים העמוק. יש רק פתרון אחד שעובר. חייבים להקים לאורך חופי ישראל רשת של שבע שמורות ימיות גדולות, מהצפון ועד הדרום. ליצור מרחבים... שבהם החיות מתרבות וגדלות ללא דייג, ללא קידוחים, עם רשות אחת שעושה סדר ומפקחת על הים. הגיע הזמן להקים שמורות טבע ימיות. This is one of the most exciting uh, updates that, uh, that I have to tell you about today, and that's that at the end of, of last year, uh, the Palmachim slide, which is the, the deep sea area that you just saw in that video, um, was declared a reserve. In this picture, we can see uh, Iris Han, a C the CEO of SPNI, Tamar Zandberg, the previous Minister of Environment, and the CEO of the Nature and Parks Authority, together declaring um, this new Palmachim slide. Some of you might have heard of Mission Blue, an organization in the States headed by Dr. Sylvia Earle, one of the first women marine biologists, um, who also declared this area a hope spot. Um, in late 2021, um, and that really helped uh, um, push forward the declaration of the Palmachim slide. And um, it's also the beginning of of continuing to declare more reserves in our EEZ. We are leading today a plan, a mas master plan of reserves for the, for the deep water, for the EEZ, 10 reserves. Um, this is something that's cutting edge in terms of marine conservation uh, in the world. We're, we're, I'm very proud to say that we are leading uh, this, this plan to, to protect our deep seas as well and to protect the world's deep seas. So, uh, going at it with, with all we have uh, to make sure that we're not protecting only our, our coastline, but also what's going on in deeper waters. Um, and, it's, and it's definitely a hard mission because as you can see, even just getting the footage in the video that we just saw, we need robots um, and a lot of work. And this master plan is based on cutting edge science and models um, so that we can sort of uh, have an idea of what's going on on the bottom of the, of the sea without actually having to, to send robots down to all of that area. Um, so very exciting stuff. We of course protect uh, or try to protect this area in other ways like petitioning to the high court um, on, uh, on halting new explorations of gas. Uh, that's something that I, that, that we're worried might change in terms of, of how much the high court will be able to help us in, in these situations if uh, this reform passes in, in the new government. Um, so definitely worried about that. Um, but uh, continuing to make sure that we um, um, protect this very vast area um, that's, that's sort of harder to protect because it's not as close. So, um, so it's, it's, you have to convince everyone. And uh, this whole master plan is something that we're also uh, just now sort of starting to bring out to the public. World Ocean Day is in June. 
Uh, we're planning a very large conference with uh, the University of Haifa and University of Tel Aviv, where we're actually going to showcase all of the science behind this uh, cutting edge master plan. Um, and we just got word that the current Minister of Environment, um, Silman, she's gonna open that, that date. So uh, really touching on subjects that, that are, are critical uh, to the protection of, of Israel's uh, marine area. So we've talked a little bit about um, marine reserves here in Israel, um, about spatial planning, especially in the EEZ, a little bit about fisheries management and the le legislation reform that we led in 20, 2016 that has changed, um, fully changed the reality of, of fishing here in Israel. There's still work to do, um, but I'm also very proud at, at, at sort of leading that change um, um, to protect our seas, especially in the Mediterranean that, as I said, is so overfished. Um, um, we have laws today that, that have, have really done a lot to protect, uh, to protect our fisheries. And uh, the last thing that I want to talk about today is Sea Watch which is basically the, our way to talk to the public. If, if most of our work is, is dealing with decision makers and policy and policy makers, um, um, Sea Watch is, is, the, is the project that we, that we run to make sure that we're also involving the public. Um, it's um, I think obvious that, that uh, sustainable conservation management cannot go forward if you don't have um, awareness with the public. And so that's why we created this app. And I'll start with a question, um, either in, if you've been on the beaches in Israel or beaches in your hometown or city, if you've ever sort of walked the beaches or maybe you scuba dive or you snorkel and you've seen some type of hazard, um, but you didn't really have uh, what to do with that. So here in Israel, we have lots of authorities and each authority is in charge of taking care of a different hazard. So if, if it's pollution, it goes to, it's the Ministry of Environment that's in charge. And if it's an injured animal, it's the Nature and Parks Authority. Um, and so while we have a lot of people on the beaches, um, which is not always very fun, when it comes to protecting the seas, it's great because um, we know that there are a lot of pairs of eyes that are seeing all of this. And we just have to find the way to use, utilize those eyes and make sure um, that they have an easy way to report um, and, and, and so that these hazards are getting a real time response. Um, I'm excited uh, to say that in the last few months or the end of, of 2022, we, um, launched our new SeaWatch app. Uh, the, the first app came out about in 2016. So you can imagine that technology has changed a lot um, by now and, and it really needed an overall update. Um, lots of new categories, um, a lot more user friendly, and we're getting great responses from our new app. A lot of work um, and, and funds went into it and we're already seeing um, a jump in the amounts of reports, of course, We'd want to get to a point where we don't get reports uh, because that would mean that there are less hazards on the coast, but we're not there yet. Yes, man.
So uh, part of creating this app is also getting uh, to all the correct people and to all of the beach and, and sea lovers. Maybe you recognize some of, of, of the people in that clip. It's actually basically our whole team is in there. Um, so we, we double as actors in our, in our spare time. Uh, and, and this is how it works. We have divers, beachgoers, fishers, um, tourists on the beaches. They see a hazard, they can report it easily on the app and that goes automatically to the correct person. Um, we spend um, a lot of time and effort making sure that we have close collaboration with these different authorities um, so that these reports get real-time response and you can see actual change um, in field or on the beach. Uh, so just a few examples, we have uh, this oil barrel leaking oil in one of our reserves in, in the center of Israel called Gdol. Uh, this was reported on the app and maybe an hour later, the, the, that it wasn't there anymore. So the ranger came and, and made sure to get rid of this and, and sort of collect all of that polluted sand. Uh, reports on fishing of sharks, all sharks and rays are protected in Israel. Um, and so uh, this shark was caught unintentionally if we were talking about bycatch, basically almost all fishing methods, whether industrial or recreational, are not selective. So here they didn't want to catch a shark, but they did, um, and, it, and um, it, it took a bit too long to get the shark back into water due to selfies. Um, we have this small grouper that was fished and then sold illegally um, because he is too small. So the minimum length, these are all new laws that came in uh, thanks to the fishing new fishing regulations. Um, uh, groupers are not allowed to be fished under 40 centimeters. Um, we all understand the meaning of, fish, of fishing fish um, that are uh, small. It means that they haven't had a chance to reproduce. And that's the exact meaning of overfishing when we are extracting faster than what they can replenish. Right underneath this grouper, by the way, you can see another grouper, exactly the same species. So you can sort of get the idea of the difference of size of what uh, an adult uh, mature grouper looks like that probably reproduced uh, for at least one, one season, if not more, versus a baby grouper um, um, that was taken out of the water too early. We can also organize uh, a beach cleanup, so reports that are coming in of dirty beaches, lots of reports of that, sadly. This, um, um, maybe some of you noticed that this was taken in Elat, in the Red Sea, not on the Mediterranean, so reports come in from there as well. Um, another case of illegal fishing of guitar fish. These are cousins of the sharks, um, um, extremely endangered species. We are lucky enough in Israel to have nursery grounds where they are reproducing. And so we have uh, extra responsibility to take care of them here because they're actually replenishing the populations in all of the Mediterranean. And also happy, happier things like seeing sea turtles nests. Um, uh, this is a guy that walks the beaches, has been walking the beaches for decades every morning and already knows to sort of uh, locate uh, the tracks of the sea turtles. And then he reports on the app and that goes directly to the rangers that collect the eggs and move the nests to, to uh, safer locations. Um, this is a practice that maybe some of you um, are aware of. It happens also in the States. Um, so another report that we get often and, and a lot lately is reports of uh, abandoned fishing gear. So these are nets uh, that, that are debris that are not being used uh, actively to, to capture fish, but they're still doing what they're designed for, uh, capturing wildlife. Um, they're also dangerous to, 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 to people, especially Especially scuba divers and swimmers, we often get reports of, of people who have sort of gotten uh, entangled in these nets. So not only animals are getting entangled in these nets. Um, um, and so when we get a report, we can also send out our, our team. Uh, maybe you recognize the blonde hair from the previous uh, film. This is a Teret, our marine ecologist. She's also a great scuba diver. Uh, and so when we get this report, this is actually something that we can respond to very quickly. We sometimes do it in cooperation with more organizations like the Israeli Diving Federation. And together we make sure to get these nets out of the water as fast as possible because it is a time sensitive issue. Last year, we got a report um, 
should have added that picture, but we had a report of a, sea, a young sea turtle that got, got caught in this net, in this ghost net, meaning there's something even more tragic about wildlife being caught in nets that, that aren't doing anything anymore and they're just there for debris. Um, and that's why we work very hard uh, to make sure that these nets are coming out of the water. Um, this is what our new app looks like. Uh, it, it, with all of the new categories like driving on shore, which is a category that wasn't included in our last app. So uh, driving on shore is illegal here in Israel. You're not allowed to drive within a hundred meter radius from the shoreline. Um, and so that is uh, also a new category uh, that we're getting. And, um, and it's working. We have about 15,000 downloads, 3,000 active users. We're already up to about 2,500 reports. Um, lots of enforcement of illegal fishing, like the pictures that I showed you before. Um, um, 30, 37 ghost nets were removed. We're, we're removing about five nets, uh, seven nets a year, something like that. Other hazards like the um, that oil barrel that was removed, um, lots of sea turtle nets that are being found and releasing um, other animals that are being caught in nets like lobsters and crabs and, and fish. Um, we also made sure to add in our new app lots of information um, that's easy, easy, easy to read um, and to understand. So all of the fishing laws that are sometimes kind of um, not easy to understand, we made sure that the public um, can get that information. Uh, we also added citizen science. So today we have reporters that are reporting on animals in their natural environment, animals that are healthy and happy uh, in their sea. And these reports are in the same way are sent automatically to researchers that are using this data to create uh, studies, um, studies that are then supporting the, the continued um, conservation here in Israel. Um, here's another example of a, a, one of the largest nets that our team ever removed. This was uh, in the end of 2021. <laughs> רשת רפאים היא ציוד דייג נטוש שנשאר בים על תקן פסולת, אך היא ממשיכה לתפקד כמרקודת מוות לבעלי חיים רבים. בערך שליש מכמות הפסולת במים הרדודים היא ציוד דייג נטוש. to make change, um, but uh, when reports like, like these come in, we also make sure uh, to, to, to get ourselves in the field and, and get these nets out. So this is the part where I humbly ask for your help to continue removing these nets. Um, um, as I said, we remove about five to seven nets every year. Um, but we've, we've also removed two more in the last uh, month uh, from reports that were sent in Sea-Watch. So you guys are welcome to um, use this barcode to get a direct link to, to donate to the blue half. I'll also send it in the chat for whoever wants to use it that way. And any amount um, will help us continue renting. Um, mostly what we need it for is to rent all of this gear so that we can go out and, and get these nets out of the water. Um, and that's about it. You guys are welcome to follow us. Um, we have lots of information in English too on our webpage. Um, 
Mafish, as well as on uh, on SPNI's webpage. Uh, our Facebook is a little bit more Hebrew oriented, but you guys are welcome to follow us there as well. Um, and 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 of course, for for any Israelis that are here, um, or if you're in Israel, you can also download the app. I don't think it'll let you download if you're not um, physically here, but um, but that's just another incentive to come visit. So um, that's it, and I'd be glad to answer questions. Okay, thank you very much, Das. Uh, very interesting. Uh, and, and a few questions, and I have some of my own, but just to get to some of the basics. So is there any English version of the Sea Watch, Watch app, or is it planned? It's, there is an English version. Um, it is in English. Uh, for, if your phone is set to English, the, the app will download in English, but you, your your app store has to be um, registered as an, as an Israel. Um, so that is possible. We do have people who are downloading it, um, not from inside Israel, but only if you're registered on an Israeli account, meaning if it thinks that you're in Israel. So, okay, I guess we can handle that. Thank you. Yeah, we, well, we can also make it so that people can download it, uh, uh just so that you can sort of see it and the way it works. It's okay. Cool. It's great. I, uh, I appreciate your, um, and I was just talking to Iris, our uh, CEO today, about the balance in SBNI between advocacy and policy work and actually doing stuff. And, uh, you know, we are understaffed in both of those areas. Um, but, you know, we just had a mission to hear to Israel, as I mentioned, and it's just so uh, it's so great that we have stuff to actually show and not just talk about in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, our work, we do stuff on the ground and, uh, you know, so the advocacy work and you mentioned turning to the courts and, uh, you know, writing the legislation. And we've been doing that since the Coastal Protection Act. When was that? 2004, I think. And, mm -hmm. yep. uh, you know, uh, ever since throughout our history and in all the fields of environmental protection, and of course, marine protection is one of the sure. big ones. Um, and I apologize, by the way, uh, to everybody who was confused about the time. We sent out a couple of varying. We've changed. We changed our time. You changed your time. The UK changed its time. I think Canadian <laughs> provinces, Canadian provinces had the had the ability to choose whether they were changing their time zones or not, uh, as is Canada's way. Um, but uh, anyway, sorry for all that. And I, we should be back on schedule next next week. We're always doing it at eight p.m. Israel time. That's our webinar time for Sunday night. So. Uh, I think next week we're back to the high seven hours from uh, from uh, the East Coast and 10 hours from the West Coast and uh, two hours from the UK, if I'm not mistaken, et cetera. Anyway, thanks very much. So uh, another question that came in, and I know it is one of the big questions of the day, um, is the current government interested in marine protection, as far as you can tell? Um, so the current government actually surprised us um, when, when, when sort of they first came into play a few months ago by saying that they um, that they're going to treat seriously the the issue of protecting the deep sea, as well as um, the buyout of of bottom trawlers. So that was promising to begin with, and and we're going to see if 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 that turns into action. Um, like I said, we have this uh, ocean conference in June, um, and Edith Silman, the Minister of Environment, said that she's going to come and talk, which I think already shows um, some interest because the whole conference is going to be dedicated to our deep sea master plan. Um, so uh, staying optimistic um, in terms of, of leading uh, those things, and but we're going to see if that sort of what happens in terms of uh, the reform going on now and if that's going to affect sort of other processes. We, uh, pr environmental protection in Israel is, is uh, uses the high courts, bagats, um, often. It's one of our main ways um, to, to make change um, with a clause called um, um, the reasonability clause. So basically saying what's reasonable to do in Israel, where protection, protecting nature is definitely a reasonable thing to do. Um, and they're talking about canceling that clause. So while the Ministry of Environment might be on board for some things, um, for other things, we might have problems in terms of how we're going to get things done 
um, and change legislation. Um, absolutely right, Hadass. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's not just the reasonableness clause. Uh, there's also the right of standing, the right to standing. Uh, they might uh, remove the ability of NGOs in general, including in the environmental movement, to actually uh, uh, have a standing to uh, to return to the courts when the people who will have standing are the people who have direct financial interests, like the developers and the polluters. So uh, there's that. And then, of course, there's the legal advisors that won't be uh, subordinate to the attorney general, but in fact, to their own ministers, so they can find things legal that could be unreasonable. And there, and then, of course, if and then, of course, they're stacking the court system uh, with judges that might not be concerned about the environment. And if, but for some reason, they do get to overturn or try to amend a law that goes through. Of course, they have an overriding clause. So uh, this is all part of the the parts of the judicial reform that we know about. Uh, so yeah. Um, I wish, uh, and you know, the good news is that the maybe, 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 I don't know, I haven't heard news in the last hour, but uh, things are coming to a head and maybe things are slowing down with the reform as well, uh, if not stopping. But uh, yes, um, uh, it, it, quite the story about the ghost nets um, and, you know, the way that they're, they, they harm biodiversity and you know, call a vote to the to the to the crews that go out there and, and take them in. By the way, uh, David and Barry and I, my staff here, we're willing to let us know the next time you're sailing. Uh, I think David scuba dives, and uh, <laughs> not, I don't know, but uh, but that would be fun. Uh, be For nice. sure, be nice. Anyway, a um, couple other questions. Uh, they're related. Uh, the, the pollu more pollution in the ocean. Where does the debris eventually wind up? Uh, like where do they float? Are we getting the debris that comes from the, the other parts of the Mediterranean? Is our debris floating to other places? A and B, uh, the whole of the brine. What is what is our position? I mean, on the what comes out of all the desalination plants and all that salt. Uh, all right, so so debris, we are definitely getting debris, not only nets, but we're getting um, lots of debris from the rest of the Mediterranean. The way the um, currents work is that they kind of the current kind of ends up in east in the eastern mediterranean where we are um so we see lots of garbage uh washing up to the beaches that um didn't originate here um for sure there were big crates that fell off a ship sort of in uh, deeper waters um not very close to israel and they made their way here as well so crates filled some people say filled with iphones found their way to our beaches as well um so yeah it, it happens by the way also also um injured animals kind of like debris if they're injured like a sea turtle is injured and it's just kind of floating at the top uh on the top of the water they often find their way here um um uh, to the beaches so we we get lots of injured sea turtles and a lot of them are actually weren't necessarily injured while they were in israel but they're coming um from other places um Luckily, we have the Sea Turtle Rescue Center that belongs to the Nature and Parks Authority that do great work in uh, in rehabilitating them and releasing them. So, so yes, definitely, we're getting stuff um, from around the Mediterranean. Uh, lots of stuff gets here, and you can see um, stuff written in Arabic coming from Northern Africa. Um, so, so lots of interesting things that end up here. Um, regarding brine. I am not aware of any um, action having to do with that yet. I think um, there is research going on in terms of its effects, um, but it seems right now that its effects are pretty local, meaning you can see very high salinity around where the water is coming out. But it's hard to say that it's affecting um, the rest of the marine habitat. Salinity is going up in general. Uh, well, salinity is high in the Eastern Mediterranean in general because um, we're also, same thing with the currents, we're actually getting the, the, the water after it's sort of traveled through the entire Mediterranean um, and it gets warmer as, and as it gets warmer, um, it evaporates, right? And the salt stays in the, the water evaporates, the salt stays in the water and that's how we get higher salinity. Um, um, so it's hard. I know studies have trouble um, differenti differentiating between 
the salinity coming from the brine and the salinity, the the, the ambient sal salinity here. Um, so I don't think that things are still are, are starting to be done in terms of managing that. We're still at, at studying in the studying phase. Right. That that that's what I understand as well. But while we've been doing it for we've been desalinating water for 15 years now. I mean, if there were any serious effects given all our monitoring and that of the I mean, in the Mediterranean in general, the side of the Mediterranean and the Nature and Parks Authority, I mean, we'd know, right? Right. I mean, yeah, it really, it could really be that climate change is masking the effects as well. Interesting. We are getting more saline all over the place. Our aquifers are getting more saline and, uh, and uh, Dead Sea is drying into a big salt bed. But um, yeah, um, a couple here, new questions on, um, can you see them, Hadas? Um, are we coordinating with anybody in the field of marine archaeology and any input or plans to support the recent UN agreement to support the high seas? So high seas is an interesting is an is interesting issue because um, the Mediterranean technically doesn't have any high seas. Oh. Um, because high seas is what's beyond the economic waters of a country. OK, so in, in the Mediterranean, it's a little bit more complicated than this because it depends if the country uh, um, uh, declared their EEZ. Israel, for instance, hasn't actually technically declared our EEZ, but it still sort of uh, counts to be our area. This is part of the legislation change that we need to be making. But in general, the idea is that in the Mediterranean, there's so many countries that one country's EEZ is already meeting the next country's EEZ, for instance, we are working with Cyprus on creating a marine reserve in the deep sea that will join, that will be part in our EEZ and part in the Cyprus, uh, in Cyprus EEZ. So- Hadas, wait, one second, just to explain to people and so yes. also in my mind. It, we have territorial waters, which are about nine to 10 kilometers from our coastline. And all this is true of all countries. Mm -hmm. 12, miles, 12. 12. 12 kilometers. So mm -hmm. nine miles, eight miles yeah. uh, off the coast is everybody, every country in the world, those are their, their territorial waters. And what you call the EEZ, which I refer to as our economic waters, exactly. is another, so it's between 12 kilometers and how much? Ooh. Uh, we just when I think it's something like that. We just, we just made the decision of uh, like, of trying to, to, it's about 40, maybe I'd have to. When you say we made the decision and you say Israel hasn't officially declared it. In other words, it's a, it's not, it's, you know, the way we just made a marine border with Lebanon, for example, the correct, we, and we sort of negotiated it because things, it's not- Yes, possible. things change with that border. Just like we, when we first made the master plan, our, the border with Lebanon was different. And then the, the, the border changed and we had to, and we had to change our plan accordingly. Um, um, the, 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 where the EEZ ends also depends on where you're looking at it and how, Haifa has a base, or are you counting from inside the bay or outside the bay? So, so, so that's the the, the gist of sort of why it's a little bit complicated. Um, but, but yes, it's around forty something like that kilometers, and that is already meeting up with the economic zone of the next country. The Mediterranean is, is small; we don't have high seas. High seas would be ocean that isn't under any jurisdiction any country's jurisdiction, obviously the hardest water to protect. Uh, oh, we lost Jay. Um, so that's the answer for in terms of, of high seas. However, um, a few months before uh, the Convention on uh, Biological Diversity of the UN um, came out with a, with a similar uh, declaration um, or decision um, that any countries that are part of that have to uh, promote 30% uh, um, reserves of other waters as well, not only high seas. High seas is really a big deal because you would need uh, global cooperation or international cooperation um, um, to make that happen. So that's why um, international agreements are so important for, for the high seas. Um, what was the other question? Let's go into the chat and Ah, if we're coordinating with marine archaeology. So yes, we just had a talk last week um, with um, um, our board from all the different organiza organizations that are part of this master plan for reserves in the economic waters. Um, and one of the people on that board is, in, is um, the director of marine archaeology 
um, uh, at the author in the authority for for conservation of archaeology in Israel. So he's uh, definitely so the, they're definitely part of that. We 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 count that in um, a lot of what we do for conservation. For instance, uh, protecting Caesarea. So Caesarea is a national park, not a reserve, but it's always been national parks. There's has have always been um, land land parks, no such thing as a marine national park, uh, but that is a change that we are making as we speak. Um, we're trying to promote wherever there is a national park on land, for instance, like there is in Caesarea, it will also mirror into the sea. Caesarea, it's very important because that's uh, where we have a lot of, of archeological findings. So um, managing that area as a national park can be um, instrumental in protecting archeology span as well. By the way, trawlers, trawling is another, it's another um, big issue um, for, for artifacts. Um, we have documentation of uh, wrecked sh historical ships that the net suddenly picks up or, um, or other historical artifacts that basically are being um, ruined as, as this net is being dragged along the bottom of the floor and is and is is capturing um, um, our history as well or Israel's history as well so so definitely have to work together um, in that sense as well that's I guess how marine conservation works if we want to do good marine conservation we have to be taking into account um, people as well and culture so for sure um, we had an, uh, asked to send the QR code again. Can I send the link? I think that might even be easier. So I'm sending the link in the chat. Um, we really appreciate your donations. We've already have been getting um, notifications for a few donations that are coming in. Um, and, and that really is great. We have a net in Haifa um, that we've been wanting to remove. Um, it's a it's a pretty complicated um, area. It's a net that's been there for a very long time. You can tell by the way, algae has grown on it. Um, and so that's, uh, that's the next objective is, is to remove that net in Haifa. And hopefully in our next talk, we'll be able to, to show you another video that we made uh, documenting the removal of, of that net. Um, I, I see that Jay is having trouble connecting. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, then, um, I guess I'll take the liberty of uh, of ending our meeting today. And I really appreciate you guys joining. Um, it, it, it's always a pleasure uh, to sort of take pride in what we're doing. Um, I've I've been in the SBNI for three years, and it's uh, I personally personally feel that I could not be in any other organization here in Israel doing as much as important work as we are. So. Um, we don't deal with the Kinneret. Jeffrey is asking about, about the Kinneret, about the um, 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 lake. Uh, that's less of what we do, but uh, maybe we need to tell Jay that, that our, one of the next talks will be talking about rivers and lakes. We just had a big uh, festival for our rivers in Israel. So spring, spring is here and weather is getting better and, and lots of festivals going on to raise awareness. That's not what we deal with, but I'll tell Jay that you asked, Jeffrey. All right, guys, thanks so much. Have a great evening.